Now, if I'm to go on my phone in the Loxon app, go to the camera, click on it. There we go. Now, the first thing we want to do is obviously find a camera that we're going to stream. In my case, I can either use my laptop camera or I have a little camera on the tripod on the site that I can also use. And we're going to need a little piece of software that is going to be key for this to actually work. Now, in Logs and Config, the only way to really stream camera files or be able to show third party camera files is using MJPEG streams because this is why it's supported and it has to use basic digest or basic authentication. Otherwise, it's not really going to work. All of these I'm going to show you in a bit or the requirements for the cameras I'm going to show you in a bit. But for now, all we really need to do is we need to shout out Andrew and download his little piece of software. As you can see, I've already downloaded mine. Here it is in a folder. And you just need to extract the file. And there it is, not too much going on. It's just 1.6 megs. And this is the actual piece of software we want. So this is what we're going to be using to actually stream the camera on the local network. So this is the camera that I'm going to be using, but I can also use the integrated camera of my laptop. It's absolutely fine. And I'm just going to pick it. You can pick the frame rates and the resolution. In my opinion, 720p, 30 FPS is more than enough. We also don't want to overload the mini server too much. So that is absolutely decent. Pick it up. Then we can go to file, settings, and just check the settings. So if you want to, you can reduce down the MJ frames per second. And also the camera is going to be available on specific port because well, this little app is running on our PC and uh, our PC has a specific IP address, let's say dot 61 for mine. And we're only going to target the camera of that IP address. So in this case, it needs to be a specific port that we're focusing on. And that port for the camera is going to be exactly port 8000. You can change it to anything you want, but for the sake of simplicity, let's keep it as it is. You can say, okay. And you can use it like this without the password, without a username and authentication. However, I would like to show you both options so we know what to look at in the future if we have a camera that requires authentication. So if you click on help and access rights, you're going to be able to see that we already have a user created, but let's create one with you. I'm going to just delete this one. So access rights, yes, we want to be able to view the camera or the users want to be able to view the camera and we want to be able to configure it somewhat, not that important. So we can just add a user, give it a name. I'm just going to call it test user. His role is user and the password. I'm just going to do test one, two, three, test one, two, three for now. Say, okay, say, okay. And we can start streaming the camera. As soon as you click on start streaming, you can see the camera is streaming on port 8000. And if I click on it, there it is. There's me. A little bit of an inception, I know. Um, and as you can see, here's the camera. You do have some settings on the side, so you can adjust contrast, brightness, and different other options. But what we want to do is we want to actually grab the MJPEG stream out of this one. So if we go forward slash camera, forward slash MJPEG, you'll see now the whole option menu is not available. We only have the camera and streaming in JPEG. Perfect. That is now ready to go to the mini server and we don't really need anything more. So let's go to config and configure it. In config, what you need is an intcom. And more specifically, we come in here and add a user defined intcom. We're going to call it PC camera, for example. I'm going to put it outside for no particular reason. Apply. And let's see. Now the URL stream is going to be exactly the same as the one that is currently online. So you can see 0 0.61 on port 8000. And we are looking for the MJPEG, not the JPEG stream itself. So I can even close it, minimize this. I can drop the link in here. And now remember earlier, we did create a user and our user is called test user and the password for the camera is test one, two, three. Awesome. Now let's drag the API connector dropped on the page. It creates its own block, super easy to use. Save in the mini server, 
and let's see what we've actually done. Now, if I'm to go on my phone in the Logson app, go to the camera, click on it, there we go. You can see me on the site, and that is a stream. We can view it on the local network. We're pulling it directly from the PC and everything's working fine. Now, the other question is, what do we really do if we want to stream the camera externally? So you're not at home, you're on a, uh, not on your Wi-Fi network, you're connected externally, and you want to be able to still see what's happening. For example, when it comes to a CCTV camera, that's going to be a much better example because you obviously care about the security. In my case, I'm not really going to be peeking into my own camera in the house, so I don't really need it, but for everyone else, it might make some sense. Now, the first thing we need to do is we actually need to go to the router and open a port to get that up and running. So in my case, right now, I'll go to the Virgin because we do have two different systems, but I'd say the Virgin router is probably something more common for most people. And we're going to adjust a few settings. Let's log in. And there's just one thing that I'm going to explain to you, which is port forwarding. Let's see if there's a nice picture because, well, I'm a very visual person, so I assume most people are. But there's some information from the internet coming in. Then that information is getting filtered by your router. And if it's coming on a specific port, let's say I'm going to be opening port 8090, and it's going to be forwarding that information to port 8000, which is our camera, which means that as soon as a request comes in from, from our router, it's going to spit back that image, that same port, that same device, and I'm going to be able to see it in real time. Port forwarding is super powerful, and we are just going to see how to configure one right now. So in pretty much all cases, it's under advanced settings. And it tends to be under security because obviously you don't want to have multiple ports open because then you're vulnerable to attacks from outside. Then we go to port forwarding or port redirection, depending on what you have on your router. And now you're going to see I have a couple of routers already set and running, but we're going to have a few more as well. Uh, no, I just have one actually. <laughs> so here's my PC. Here's port 8000, which is what I'm using for the camera. And as I said, I'm going to open the port 8090 externally. Now, how to actually do this? In most cases, you're going to be able to create a new rule or you're going to be able to edit. So click on that. Select the IP address of the device that you're targeting. On the local port, you need to select the port that you're locally using to view the camera. There we go. And on the external port, you're going to be using the port that you're forwarding or the port that we're trying to use to uh, basically trigger or redirect the information to our internal one. In my case, I said it's going to be 8090, just so we have a little bit of a difference. 8090, there we go. Now, protocol, in most cases, is going to be TCP. It might be UDP every now and again. However, just use both for the sake of simplicity. And enable, yes, absolutely enable it. Add a rule, this is going to save into a router, and then your port is going to be open. However, that doesn't always work. Sometimes you need to reboot the router. So it's always going to be nice for us to check how exactly to do that. And if you go to you get signal, it's probably my favorite website, uh, port open ports, I can check port 1890 in here. And you can see the port is open. And now, if I'm to grab my external IP address, this is how basically the rest of the world is perceiving my PC or the router. And I go to port 8090, enter. There we go. Here's the camera. And if I also go and do forward slash camera, forward slash MJPEG, press enter. There we go. Here's the MJPEG stream. And that is exactly what we're going to be using in our case to stream to the camera. So let's grab that, minimize it, come in here, and you'll be able to see you have cloud 8090. That's why I used it. Now, in my case, I'm just going to drop that port. There we go. I'm going to save in the mini server. We can also go externally. So if I go and switch off my Wi-Fi, click on done, go down to the 
mini server again, wait for it to load up external connection, go rooms, outside, click on my PC camera, and there we go. Now I can view that camera from absolutely anywhere in the world. I'm not limited to being on my local network. Awesome. Now, another thing we can do is if we go back to config, we've already seen it, but you have cloud DNS 8090. So if you don't have an external port or an external IP that is fixed, so it means that it doesn't change every single day, what you can do is you can use Loxon's cloud DNS, and then that is going to generate a port for the day, it's going to do the external connection for you via proxy, and then it's going to continue exactly the same as if you were to put your external address in here. And that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you'd like to see in the next video. Cheers, up to next time.